I'm recording this on the Sony a7 IV. It has a dual base ISO, it can record HLG and SLOG3, and it even has an outstanding autofocus given you have compatible lenses. And that makes for a really great camera, especially for its price point. It's what, $2,500 new? And if you buy from the used market, you could probably get it uh, down to $2,000. Even when it comes to dynamic range, it surpasses more expensive cameras, which isn't to call it cheap. Usually when people use the word cheap or budget, it's synonymous with low quality or just fragile. However, this thing is a workhorse. Like I said again, especially for its price. With all of those stats out of the way, there's a reason why my next camera will not be the FX9 nor the FX6. The reasons are very simple. Versatility as well as future proofing. I want to say that Sony cameras have about a 10 year lifespan. There are people that are still making documentaries on the FS7 as well as the uh, F55 and they are really substantial documentaries. They have been given technologies that were essentially going to be the future and that they were. It's on par with the V-Raptor X which is probably way more expensive considering the accessories that shouldn't be necessary but completely are because that's how RED makes their money with their proprietary systems. I'm already in the Sony ecosystem. I was this close for Lumex or Panasonic and even Fujifilm because they just came out with a stellar medium format camera. However, I didn't want to have to purchase more and more lenses. Probably the reason why I'm shooting like this is open gate. I know this could be uh, whatever topic for some people that don't shoot anamorphic, but I do. And even if you don't shoot anamorphic, if you just shoot spherical, then you could also crop in or change the aspect ratio as you move further along with your editing process or what have you. It is something that I think should have been available from the get-go. I hope uh, there is a firmware updating all of these systems because if you bought the whole camera, if you bought the whole sensor, you should be able to use the whole sensor. Another reason I'm purchasing this as opposed to the FX9 is the 16-bit XOCN. This is a log format. I am a fan of log. I like shooting Apple log as well. Uh, S log is completely fine, though I am shooting HLG just to see the high dynamic range on this. But it is very, very useful and it doesn't take up as much as space as the ProRes formats do. Also, I don't feel that it's completely necessary to mess with the ISO if your uh, DP already adjusted everything to its parameters. Yes, it is very flexible. However, it's not completely necessary if you shot it right in the, in the first place. Now, this thing does come in with a built-in V-mount. And that's something I think the FX6 should have had. I'm pretty sure that they left it out so this could be a selling point. However, it's very compact. Because I know if I'm going to rig this out, I'm going to need the XLR handle as well as the V-mount. And those come in internally. And another reason I wanted to stick to the E-mount family is because the future of lenses is flange. That's just a statement of fact. PL was there, it served its purpose, it has a great locking mechanism. However, the nanification of all these lenses, including this one I'm shooting with, which is a uh, Surrey 35, is quite remarkable. This should have been much larger and I could have bought the larger version, but these are completely portable and they are a great bang for your buck. Just look at the Cook SP3s as well as some of Zeiss's newer lenses. These flange systems are really small and you could hear it from an airy technician. PL. We invented PL in the 80s and it's just outdated. It was meant for film. It was just too limiting because you have to leave room for a, a spinning mechanical shutter. The more room you put between the lens and the sensor of the film, the harder it is to design really high performance lenses. So if you can get rid of that space and move the lens closer to the camera, and this is actually in the stills world, 
why all the stills manufacturers are going to mirrorless cameras. It's because they can shrink that distance. You know, for the same reason, we couldn't have made these lenses unless we shrank that distance and made the back of this mount a lot wider. I am no optical engineer. However, I do know how to respect prestige as well as qualifications. And it is quite apparent that the flange systems are here to stay and here to grow. Given that Sony tends to be a lead manufacturer in its sensors, I'm pretty sure that they are definitely going to include some of some firmware updates that they have planned out. This is quite normal for larger companies with a uh, with a, such an outlook in the future. Yes, sometimes they do withhold technologies, but that's so they could keep selling and selling. I believe this is completely strategic in terms of their business model. There is a reason why Apple has already developed the M5 chip, though it, it's not rolling it out, because the M4 has already been developed and it's simply just sitting on the sidelines. This is what these large companies do. You can't blame them, it's their business model. With that being said, I do think that the Verano is going to be one of those systems that is going to be used for years. There's also a case to be made on why did they wait on shutter angle for the FX6 and the FX3 and the FX30 now. Well, that was simply not to undermine their other systems like the FX9. Somebody wanted shutter angle, maybe they just went to the FX9. These are software patches that were completely compatible with the systems because it's not like they just changed out the chip. They're completely compatible. However, they want their systems to have a long lifeline. Now somebody was just standing on the sidelines on getting a Sony system. And now that they could shoot rolling shutter, then they go for it. And if somebody was standing on the sidelines on open gate, hopefully in the future, if the FX3 gets it, then I might just get an FX3. However, with the 16-bit OCN, I, I'm pretty sure I'm leaning towards the uh, Burano. It's a yes, it's twenty-five thousand dollars. However, I'm going to purchase this in Oregon or Alaska, so I don't have to pay that silly tax for having purchased something that I want to own. Because between the FX9 and the Sony Venice, I'd much rather have a small form factor Burano. Given the recent firmware updates, I'm pretty sure they want to stretch out its lifespan. It only came out a few years ago. And like I said, I can't blame them. There's a market for some filmmakers and there's a market for another filmmakers. Though it's not an airy per se, it does fulfill my workflow. All right, guys, that's about it. Um, my camera is overheating. That's one of the caveats of the a7 IV when recording HLG. I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, have a good one.